eventually, sports gives us answers. Joy and I were talking about this yesterday. When you watch those documentaries like Michael Jordan, I mean, you kind of hear about stuff, but there's nothing better than a great sports movie or a great sports book or a great sports article to give you all the little rumors, gossip, and innuendo. So for the last month, Russell Wilson and his people have been taking shots at Pete Carroll. And I've told you for the last year, Pete's not really into Russ, and Russ used to be, but he's not really into Pete. And when Paul Allen, the owner, died, he was very passionate about football. His sister now owns the team. She's not that interested. She doesn't have the eagle eye on Pete Carroll. And Pete now runs the franchise. It is Pete's franchise. John Snyder doesn't have final say in personnel. Russell Wilson has little say in anything. It is a power, lopsided power dimension. Pete's got all of it. And this morning in The Athletic, they write the article, multiple sources. This is explosive. Apparently, before a Thursday night game against Arizona, Russell was struggling, came in, left the room furious with coaches dismiss dismissing his ideas. Uh, Russell Wilson went to receive Man of the Year during the Super Bowl, sat next to Roger Goodell, and seed as he watched Tom Brady rarely get hit on the offensive line. Russell Wilson went back to Pete Carroll and said, can we talk about what we're going to do with the offensive line? And Russell Wilson was dismissed. Tom Brady has never been dismissed in Tampa. Mahomes is never dismissed in Kansas City. This article lays it out. Pete has no interest in Russell Wilson's ideas, thoughts, schemes, or coaching ideas. He's not interested. And let's be honest, Pete's never really totally been into Russell Wilson. He sent the general manager, John Snyder, to scout Josh Allen out of Wyoming. That made Russell and his agent furious. And according to the athletic story today, they would have absolutely drafted Mahomes if he falls to them. Now, come on. If you have Mahomes, you don't draft Russell Wilson. And if you have Russell Wilson, you don't draft Mahomes. They're just not that into him. I've been told Russell was into Pete Carroll, but now he's been sacked 394 times in nine years, and he's over it. Look at the last five stars in any sport that have left a coach that's successful. Brady Belichick, who won. Kawhi Popovich, who won. Aaron Rodgers McCarthy, who's looked better. KD and Steve Kerr, sorry, but the Warriors are no longer a championship team. KD wins and Chris Paul and Doc. The star always lands on his feet and flourishes. I've seen this with my business. The Bill Simmons will end up flourishing somewhere. It's the networks that have the hole. There's always going to be a taker for a great player. Pete Carroll is sub-500 in the NFL without Russell Wilson. And this is where Pete has a hole. Russell Wilson was dogged at North Carolina State. This is his sensibility. He had to transfer out of North Carolina State because after three great years, Russell Wilson's coach dismissed him to Mike Glennon. So that's in his DNA. Russell's sensitive about that. He goes to Wisconsin and literally lights up the Big Ten, best numbers ever for Wisconsin football offense. And he doesn't get drafted until the third round. So Russell Wilson has a right to be a little defensive. He is also the greatest player in NFL history who's never received a single MVP vote. Not a vote. So Russell Wilson's reality is, my college coach, even though I was a star, I had to transfer. I go to Wisconsin, I set school records, I get drafted in the third round. I take a losing coach and make him a Hall of Famer, Pete Carroll. I don't get a single MVP vote. I'm sorry, but I'm going to defend Russell Wilson if he's a little defensive getting sacked 394 times in nine years. He's a little defensive. He's a little gun shy when he's dismissed by coaches. And the last five star players who have been dismissed from their team or the coaches parted or there's been a divorce, the, the players won every single time. So now, is, is Russell Wilson replaceable? Well, 
Oprah Winfrey was re- irreplaceable on daytime TV. Howard Stern was irreplaceable FM radio. Michael Jordan, the Bulls have never been the same, was irreplaceable for the NBA and the Bulls. Uh, LeBron, three for three, has been irreplaceable in the M- NBA. And I would say Tom Brady in New England appears to be irreplaceable. Is Russell Wilson irreplaceable? I don't know. But boy, he's good. Boy, he's good. Wisconsin football's never looked like that since he left. Not offensively. NC State football hasn't looked like that since he left. And Pete Carroll's got a losing record pre-Russell Wilson. Fired twice in a losing record in Seattle. So I don't think Pete's ever truly been into him. I think Russell was. He no longer is. The Athletic has the piece. It lays it all out. And it, as we predicted, as we predicted, when Tom Brady went to Tampa and his team listened to him and they got him pieces he wanted, and they rebuilt offensive pieces they were missing, and they treated him like a star. Look look how, read this article, look how Russell Wilson has acted since then. Russell Wilson never leaked anything. Russell Wilson's people didn't do this. In the last month since Brady won, every week, Joy and I have been here, there's been a Russell Wilson story, and now it comes out. He watched Brady and that offensive line get rebuilt in a year. He watched Brady get Gronk. He watched Brady get Leonard Fournette. All the guys that scored for Tom Brady in the Super Bowl were guys that Tom Brady asked to get. Antonio Brown, Gronk, and Leonard Fournette. And he asked them, draft an offensive lineman. All of them. Seattle, Russell looks at that and says, can anybody ever listen to me? And they don't. So real drama. I I still cannot believe Seattle would move off Russell Wilson. I can't believe they would. But um, read the story yourself. It's ugly. Okay, Um, I believe this story, and I agree with this story. John Lynch, GM of the 49ers, came out yesterday and said, Jimmy Garoppolo is our starting quarterback this year. I like him, and we're not moving off him. I believe that story. This story from Diana Russini. The Houston Texans will not trade Deshaun Watson. They are refusing. They believe they can salvage their relationship. Okay, So I'm going to say I believe both. So, and I do believe Houston wants to salvage it. And I do believe Garoppolo wins 75% of the time in San Francisco, and there's nobody available for San Francisco with a 12th pick. So let's look at the quarterbacks that are now off the market. Matthew Stafford to Ram, Carson Wentz to the Colts, Deshaun's not going to be traded, Dak, according to a story yesterday, is going to be franchised, he's not in the market, and Jimmy Garoppolo's off it. Okay, so what is now on the market? Oh, this is interesting. Jameis Winston, Sam Darnold, Cam Newton, Marcus Mariota, and five rookies. It's not exactly a robust group after Trevor Lawrence, and he's gone with the first pick. So my question is, the worst-case scenario has now arrived for the New England Patriots. That's what's available And by the way, this morning, I counted nine teams that need a quarterback. Jags, Jets, Eagles, Panthers, Broncos, Patriots, Washington, Bears, Saints. Meaning, I just showed you the nine available, and there's nine that need them. Meaning, there's going to be bidding wars on some. We know David Tepper of Carolina is a very wealthy man and very aggressive. He will overpay for a quarterback. We, knew, we know Philadelphia will probably overdraft or overpay. That's what they do. We know the Saints. Sean Payton's not going to be here messing around. He's going to overpay for somebody or overdraft. This is New England post-Tom Brady. Lost. It's the worst-case scenario. The quarterback market's barren. Eight other teams beside you want one, and you've got the 15th pick. My guess is New England absolutely has to trade up in this draft. I don't know what they're going to trade. I really don't. They don't have any players anybody wants. Maybe they give three first-round picks. But this is New England post-Brady. Pete Carroll, Seattle, are you watching? Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.